All right, everybody, welcome to another deep dive with us. And today we're going to be looking into something uh, pretty fascinating, I think pretty wild too. We're going to be looking at wireless body area networks, W bands. And I know that sounds a little bit uh, intimidating, like what are you even talking about? But chances are you're already using them. Think about fitness trackers, smart watches, you know, things like that. They're collecting data from your body all the time and sending it wirelessly to your devices. And that's really what we're talking about. It's this network of tiny sensors on your body communicating with each other. And it's creating this stream of information about what's going on with you, which is pretty incredible. But like any new tech, especially one that's so closely tied to us, literally there are some questions, right? We've been seeing some discussions online. And it's clear that some folks are a little bit worried about the downsides of W bands. Hmm. You know, things like, is there potential for electronic warfare targeting these networks? Or what about the human biofield and how that might be impacted? And, you know, these are totally valid concerns. I get it. It's important to be aware of the risks with any technology. So that's why we're here today. To help us unpack all of this, I've got an expert with me who's going to break it all down, even if you're not, you know, super techie. So let's just start with the basics. What exactly ISS a WD band and how does it actually work? Okay, great question. So picture this. You've got these tiny sensors, almost like little spies placed all over your body. Some might be in your clothes, others, maybe patches you put on your skin, or even for more specialized medical stuff, they could be implanted under your skin. And these sensors are designed to pick up on all kinds of signals from your body. It's pretty wild. Everything from your heart rate, your blood pressure, to your temperature, even how you move. Yeah, so it's like having this microscopic team of detectives following you around and monitoring everything. Mm. I mean, it's pretty cool, but also kind of creepy when you think about it. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely an intimate technology. There's no doubt about that. But that's also what makes it so powerful. It's giving us this whole new way of understanding our bodies, interacting with them in ways we never could before. Makes sense. Okay, so then how does this info actually get transmitted from these little sensors to, let's say, your phone or your doctor's computer? Is this like a wires situation? Oh. Or are we talking magic spells, carrier pigeons? What's the deal? Uh -huh. No pigeons, thankfully. It's all about radio waves. So these sensors have these tiny antennas that emit low-power radio signals kind of like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, you know, those kinds of things. And these signals carry the data from the sensors to a central hub. So that could be your smartphone, a special receiver, or even the cloud, you know. And from there, the data can be analyzed, displayed, shared, however it needs to be. Okay, so invisible waves carrying information. Got it. It's yeah. like magic, but science magic, I guess. <laughs> now let's talk about the elephant in the room. We've seen a lot of talk online, especially on platforms like Rumble, about some of the potential risks with W bands things like electronic warfare and the impact on the human biofield. And I know these topics can be pretty sensitive. A lot of people have strong feelings about them. So can you help us make sense of these concerns and what does science actually say about them? Absolutely. And, you know, I think it's really important to start by acknowledging that these concerns are coming from a good place. It's about respect for the human body and wanting to protect it from harm, like the idea of electronic warfare. It taps into this fear that these invisible waves could be used against us, weaponized somehow. And then the human biofield, while it hasn't been scientifically proven, it speaks to this belief in a subtle energy field that surrounds us. And I think it's important to approach these ideas with an open mind, be willing to listen to different perspectives. Even if we don't fully understand or agree with them, we need to respect where those concerns are coming from. I think that's a really important point. It's not about dismissing anyone's fears or beliefs. It's about yeah. having a conversation and trying to find common ground. So let's dig into this electronic warfare idea a little more. I mean, it sounds like something out of a movie, but is it actually possible for someone to hack into these signals and interfere with them? Well, it's a question that security researchers are looking into all the time. In theory, any wireless technology is vulnerable. You know, that's just the nature of it. Just like someone could jam your Wi-Fi or intercept your Bluetooth connection, it's conceivable that someone could target the signals from W bands. But the good news is that W bands are designed with security in mind from the get go. They often use encryption, which basically scrambles the data, making it impossible to read without the right key. So it's like having a secret code that protects your information as it's flying through the air. Exactly. You got it. Only the authorized receiver, whether that's your phone or a medical device, has the key to unlock and make sense of that data. But I'll be honest, no technology is perfect. Just like hackers are always trying to break into computer systems, they could target W bands too. That's why the work that's being done in cybersecurity is so important. It's a constant evolution. So it's like this never-ending race between the people trying to protect these networks and those who might try to exploit them. Yeah, you could say that. It's a constant back and forth. But that's how we push the boundaries of what's possible 
while also making sure these technologies are used safely and responsibly. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so let's switch gears for a minute and talk about the human biofield, which we've seen come up a lot in discussions about W bands. Can you help us understand this idea a little better? And is there any scientific evidence to support it? This is where things get a little tricky. The biofield is often associated with alternative medicine and spiritual practices. It's usually described as this subtle energy field that surrounds and permeates living things, and it's thought to influence our health and well-being. From a scientific standpoint, though, the existence of a biofield hasn't been definitively proven yet. There have been some early studies that have looked at the effects of electromagnetic fields on biological systems. But those studies haven't really given us conclusive evidence to support the concept of the biofield as it's often described. So it's an idea that resonates with a lot of people, but it's still very much open for exploration and debate from a scientific perspective. Exactly. And I think we need to approach this topic with a lot of humility and respect. Science is all about constantly discovering new things. What we know today could change tomorrow. Just because we haven't found scientific evidence for something yet doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means we need to keep asking questions, keep exploring different perspectives, and be open to the possibility that there's more to the world than we currently understand. And I think that applies to technology as well. I mean, W bands are still relatively new. Mm -hmm. We're only just starting to understand their potential and what they could mean for us. It's important to approach them with a sense of both excitement and caution. You know, recognize the incredible opportunities, but also stay aware of the potential risks. So we've covered a lot of ground already, but there's still so much more to explore. When we come back, we'll dig deeper into some specific concerns that people have about W bands, things like privacy breaches and data misuse. And we'll also talk about some of the amazing ways this technology is already being used to improve healthcare and even boost athletic performance. So stick with us. We'll be right back after a quick break. You know, it's important to remember that these concerns about electronic warfare and the human biofield, they really come from a place of caring. It's about people wanting to protect themselves, and that's something we should respect. Right. It's easy to just brush off ideas that seem a little out there, but I think it's way more helpful to try to understand those concerns. Yeah. You know? and to address them with empathy and respect. Exactly. Uh, and especially when we're talking about technology that's so closely tied to our bodies and our health, people have every right to be cautious and ask questions. Absolutely. So let's talk about some of the specific concerns that people have raised about W bands, particularly around privacy. I mean, these devices are collecting so much personal data mm -hmm. about us, right? Yeah. Heart rate, sleep patterns, even our movements. It's natural to worry about who has access to that and how it might be used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a totally valid concern. And it's something that the people developing this technology take very seriously. Just like any technology that deals with personal data, there's always the risk of misuse or someone getting access to it who shouldn't. That's why it's so important to have strong security measures in place to protect that information and to be transparent about how that data is being collected, stored, and used. So what kind of security measures are we talking about here? Is it just a password or is it something more sophisticated? Oh, it's way more than just a password. W bands typically use encryption to protect the data. Basically, it scrambles the data, making it impossible to read without the right key. So it's kind of like having a secret code for your information as it's being transmitted. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. And on top of that, there are strict regulations and ethical guidelines that govern how personal health data can be collected and used. For example, in healthcare, patient confidentiality is paramount. So there are laws that protect the privacy of medical records. So there are safeguards in place to prevent misuse. But I think a lot of people are still worried about hackers getting access to this data. And then, of know. course, there are the ethical considerations we talked about earlier, yes. like privacy, data security, and informed consent. These are complex issues that we need to think about carefully. So it's about finding that balance embracing the potential of W bands while also being aware of the risks and challenges. Exactly. We need to have open and honest discussions about how this technology is being developed and used. And those discussions need to involve not just scientists and engineers, but also ethicists, policymakers, and the general public. Right. It's not just about the technology itself. It's about how we choose to use it and what kind of impact we want it to have on our lives. Exactly. You know, it really feels like we're at this point where amazing technology is bumping up against some pretty deep-seated beliefs about our bodies and our health. I agree. It's like this intersection of science and what people believe that makes W bands so interesting and so tricky at the same time. It's exactly. And it's a conversation that's only going to get more important as this tech becomes more common. Yeah. you know, more a part of everyday life. Yeah. 
So let's go back to those concerns we were talking about before, especially about electronic warfare and the human biofield. Knowing what we know now about W bands, how should we be thinking about those ideas? Well, I think the main thing to keep in mind is that these concerns, they come from a place of caring. People want to protect themselves, and that's understandable. It's not about saying those feelings are wrong. It's about looking at them with an open mind and thinking critically about them. So it's about balancing respect for people's beliefs with what we know from science. Exactly. Like with electronic warfare, the idea of someone targeting W bands on a large scale, it seems unlikely based on what we know right now. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't push for strong security measures and demand transparency from the companies making these devices. That makes sense. We need to remember that any wireless tech has its weaknesses, and it's up to us to make sure those weaknesses are addressed. Okay, and what about the human biofield? How do we fit that belief in with the science behind W bands? I think it comes down to respectful conversation. You know, science might not see the biofield in the same way that some people do, but that doesn't mean those experiences aren't valid. It's about creating a space where different perspectives can exist together and be discussed openly, even if people disagree. It's like acknowledging that our understanding of science and the human body is always growing. What yeah. we know today might be different tomorrow, and that's okay. The important thing is to stay curious, keep asking questions, and be open to new information. So as we wrap up our deep dive into W bins, what's the big question you'd like our listeners to walk away with? Well, as this technology gets more advanced and becomes a bigger part of our lives, how do we make sure it's used for good? How do we balance the benefits of W bands with things like privacy and security and making sure they're not misused? It's a question that requires us to think critically, to talk to each other, and to work together to shape the future of tech in a way that benefits everyone. That's a really powerful thought and one I think we should all be considering. It reminds us that technology isn't just about cool gadgets. It's about how we use those tools to improve our lives and build a better future. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of wireless body area networks. It's been a fascinating journey. We hope this conversation has given you a better understanding of this new technology, what it can do, and the things we need to be thinking about as it becomes more a part of our lives. Remember, knowledge is power. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay involved in shaping the future of technology. Until next time, keep exploring.